In this lesson, I'm going to cover how to apply the chi-square test in Excel. We're going to use data from the recent presidential election. And this is information from CNN exit polls from November 9th, 2016. And the information we're going to focus on is marital status and whether or not the respondent reported that they voted for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. So the percentages reported by CNN were that for respondents who were married, 43% voted for Clinton and 53% voted for Trump, while those who were unmarried, 55% voted for Clinton and 38% voted for Trump. Now, wrapped up into some of these percentages are other underlying demographic information uh, that could cover age levels, race, gender, and other aspects. So we should keep that larger perspective in mind. But again, we're going to focus on performing a chi-square test. So we'll need to use the actual numbers of respondents who fit in each of these categories, and each of these are independent. So we have 6,120 individuals who were married and voted for Hillary Clinton. We had 7,543 married individuals who voted for Donald Trump. For the unmarried category, we had 5,668 unmarried individuals who voted for Hillary Clinton and 3,916 unmarried individuals who voted for Donald Trump. For the chi-square test, it's also important to have column and row totals. So there were 11,788 respondents who voted for Hillary Clinton and 11,459 who voted for Donald Trump. And there were 13,663 individuals who responded who were married and 9,584 individuals who were unmarried for a total of 23,247 individuals. So this is our actual observed data. And we also need to compute our expected count. So our, our first table is our actual counts, our observed values, and we also need to compute our expected counts. And we can get this by multiplying the row total by the column total and then dividing by the total number of respondents. So it's going to be, I'm going to use parentheses here, it's going to be H2 multiplied by F4 divided by H4. That will give us our expected values in the cell for Hillary Clinton and married. And we can actually, if we use some absolute referencing here, we can just drag this formula through the other cells. So for H2, we want this to remain in column H, so we put a dollar sign in front of the H. For F4, we want that to remain in row 4, so we want the dollar sign in front of the 4, and then we don't want H4 to change, so we're going to put dollar signs in front of the H and in front of the 4. And so with that, we can drag over and drag down, and now we have our expected counts table to go along with our actual counts. So the chi-square statistic is a measure of how far the observed counts are from the expected counts. And as we'd expect, when the observed counts are very different from the expected counts, we'll have a large chi-square, which will provide evidence against the null hypothesis. And when the observed and expected values are close together, we'll have a small value of chi-square resulting. The p-value from the chi-square comes from comparing the value of the chi-square statistic with critical values for a chi-square distribution. And we're actually going to just find the p-value in Excel, but it is possible also to calculate the chi-square statistic as well. And for a chi-square test to be valid, we need to make sure we have an average of the expected cell counts at least five. All individual cell counts should be at least one. And for a two by two table, which is what we have, all four expected cell counts should be at least five. So for this data, we're gonna test a null hypothesis that there's no difference 
in the distribution of marital status of exit poll respondents who supported Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And the alternative hypothesis will be that there is a difference in the distributions. So for our p-value, we're going to use the chi-square test to compute this. So it's chisq.test. And we select our actual range first, and then a comma, and then our observe or our expected range. So actual first and then expected second. And we come up with a, an extremely small p-value, and this small p-value gives us convincing evidence to reject the null hypothesis and conclude there is a difference in the distributions of marital status and the candidate supported, and there is the statistically significant association. I've also recreated the, this data using the same percentages but assuming smaller sample size. So our initial sample size was 23,247 and now assuming we kept that same percentage but then had only one-tenth of that sample size, so now 2,325 respondents and I wanted to see how this affects the p-value. So we need to create our expected table so we can multiply the row and column totals and divide by our total. And again, for our, for our row, we want to keep the column. So the dollar sign there for our column total, we want to keep it in row 4. And then our overall total, we want to make sure it stays in M4. And so again, our p-value and our chi-square statistic, we're looking at the difference between our expected values and our observed values. In Excel, we're going to use the chi-square test. We're going to select our actual range and then our expected range. And again, we find a very small p-value, not quite as small with a larger sample size, but we're still going to reject the null hypothesis and still conclude that there is a difference in the distributions. So let's now do the same thing. Again, take a, only a tenth of the sample. So now looking at 232 respondents instead of 2,325. We need to create our, create our expected table. So for our rows, it's R2. We want to keep that in R, so we use the dollar sign there. We want our column total to stay in 4 and divide by the total of 232. We want that to stay in R4. So now we can drag this through our expected table. Our p-value now, again, the chi-square test, selecting our actual values and then our expected values. And so now we've got a p-value that is 0 0.029. So this is still smaller than our 0 0.05 alpha, but we're starting to get closer. We can see that now there's we're not as convinced as we were with the larger sample size, but there's still a statistically significant association between who these respondents voted for and their marital status. And then the final table now we're taking again a tenth of that sample size so looking at just 24 respondents we need to compute our expected table. So we'll start here again with a row. We want to keep that in column W. For the column total we want to keep that in row 4 and then dividing by our overall total of 24. And we can drag this over. And so we're just on the cusp of making sure that we maintain 
our assumptions with keeping those expected count, cell counts at least five. And again, our p-value chi-square dot test. Selecting our actual values and then our expected values. And now we get a fairly large p-value, 0 0.4076. And so now we're no longer have convincing evidence to reject the null hypothesis. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. Our sample size is pretty low. And these differences between our observed counts and our expected counts could be due to chance alone.